Today we have one of the most historic firearms out of the Greg Lamp Collection in our upcoming August Premier Firearms Auction, a Sharps Model 1853 Slant Breach Carbine. And this isn't just any Slant Breach Model 1853. This one is factory documented as sold to the Emigrant Aid Society, the organization that was raising funds and buying arms and other supplies for the free state settlers moving to Kansas during the sectional conflict known as Bleeding Kansas prior to the Civil War. So these carbines were important because in Kansas in the time period, there was literal violent conflict between the free staters, representing obviously the free state issues being against slavery into the territories, and the border ruffians who were primarily crossing the border from Missouri who were trying to make Kansas a slave state. As you can see from the get-go, there's obviously gonna be tensions between these two groups that have very you know, oppositional views of one another. They don't like each other from the get-go, and that is why the Free Staters needed firearms. So this carbine, and hundreds like it, would have been destined most likely for Lawrence, Kansas, which is basically the Free State capital of Kansas during Bleeding Kansas. And Lawrence, Kansas was actually attacked two times during this time period. The first time, the basically pre-Confederate slave forces attack the town, destroy some of the printing presses, destroy some of the buildings, and kind of terrorize the community. There was actually only one death. It was one of the border ruffians that was part of the assault, got killed by some falling debris. The second time during the Civil War, they actually come in and kill 150 men and boys who were unarmed, basically because the town was a hotbed of anti-slavery activity. When the Emigrant Aid Company was trying to get these carbines, into Kansas, they had to come up the Missouri River, so they had to basically travel through hostile territory. So in order to get these guns into Kansas unimpeded, what they would do is they'd actually put them into cases, marking them as books or sometimes Bibles. And so that has led to the nickname for these is Beecher's Bibles. And Henry Ward Beecher was one of the leading abolitionists in New England in the time period, and he was helping fund the purchase of these rifles through the Emigrant Aid Company. And then he also has several really good quotes about these Sharps that really led to his name being directly associated with them. Beecher said, the Sharps rifle was a truly moral agency, and that there was more moral power in one of those instruments, so far as the slaveholders of Kansas are concerned, than in a hundred Bibles. You might just as well read the Bible to a herd of buffaloes as to those fellows who follow Atchison and Stringfellow, but they have supreme respect for the logic that is embodied in Sharps rifles. So I mentioned they would label these as Bibles or books when they were shipping them to Kansas. Another precaution they would take to make sure these guns couldn't be used by their adversaries is they would actually take the breech blocks out. So if you look at the Sharps 1853, there's the breech block here that goes up and down to allow you to load from the breech. What's pretty interesting about this example is that you it fits right within that story of them taking these breech blocks out. This is actually serial number 16662. So it's a fairly later production for an 1853, but it's got the early 1853 breech block. So they would have had hundreds of these breech blocks being shipped separately from the carbines, and then they would put them back into the carbines once they got them into Kansas. So they wouldn't obviously have a way to know which breech block went into which gun because they are not serial numbered components. So this kind of fits in with the story of this carbine being shipped to Kansas. Another part that this falls into with this particular carbine is that many of these carbines were actually seized in shipment. So there was a whole shipment that was going up the river and the border ruffians basically found out that these were on board and they seized them when they got to Kansas. And there was a bunch of legal proceedings that actually got the carbines held up in Missouri for a time period and they finally got released right before the beginning of the Civil War. The Sharps is a very innovative firearm for the time period. Most firearms being used in the 1850s are still single shot muzzle loading firearms. The Sharps is a single shot still, but it's a breech loader. So you can load straight from the breech end. You can see there's a groove here. You can load a paper cartridge. It's actually got an onboard automatic primer system. The primer systems were kind of hit or miss. So a lot of times they were used with standard percussion caps, but just being able to load from the breech instead of having to drive the load down the barrel like you would with the muzzle loader allows a Sharps to be fired much faster than a traditional muzzle loading firearm. The Sharps is also a very reliable design. It's very sturdy, it's, it can handle you know, full on combat. And they saw extensive use once the actual Civil War broke out. But hundreds of these would have been purchased for the immigrant aid company and the free state settlers in 
Kansas, whereas most of their adversaries are gonna be using traditional muzzle-loading rifles, double-barrel shotguns, things of that nature. And these would, of course, been used alongside Colt revolvers and other multi-shot handguns like pepper boxes and whatnot in the period. The most important piece of historical documentation that accompanies this carbine is a March 19, 1856 Sharps invoice for 100 of these 1853 carbines, and it's invoiced directly to General Samuel C. Pomeroy. Pomeroy was one of the most important agents for the Emigrant Aid Society, which was supplying these carbines to free soil settlers in Kansas during the sectional conflict prior to the Civil War. But very few of them do we actually have any actual documentation showing they were actually emigrant aid company guns. There were thousands and thousands of Sharps Model 1853s. It was actually a relatively popular model and saw use through the Civil War. And it's a classic 1853 slant breech carbine. It is 52 caliber. It's got a really small brass blade front sight, and then it's got what they call a squirrel ear rear sight, which is kind of a fun name, but if you look at it, it is kind of shaped like a squirrel ear, and you have a small notch here that lines up with the blade when you're aiming, and it can be angled a little bit to change the elevation if you're taking a longer shot. The name slant breech comes from the fact that back here, if you look at the breech section, the angle of the gun is slanted. Later sharps are a little more straight, so that's why they call these slant breech sharps. If you also look at the breech end of the barrel, it is also slanted at an angle. So when you close the breech block, that kind of comes up at an angle behind the barrel. And one of the features on the carbines is nice and fitting for, you know, fighting a frontier battle on the Kansas Plains is it's got a long saddle ring bar here on the left side with a saddle ring that would be essentially clipped to the cavalryman by a cavalry sling that would prevent him from dropping the gun. Um, you can load a sharps easier on horseback, but that'd still be difficult. Um, and so by having it clipped to you, that prevent you from dropping your gun in combat. So if you've seen the 2020 series on Showtime, The Good Lord Bird, you can see Ethan Hawke playing John Brown in the series. He is using one of the sharps 1853 slant breaches through much of that show. And you can see in some of the shots, this ring clipped to a carbine sling which is pretty neat, and you can also see him using a Sharps 1853 slant breech. That is a correct feature of that series because John Brown, one of the most famous abolitionists in American history, arguably probably the most famous abolitionist alongside you know, Harriet Tubman and some of the other prominent black figures in the movement, John Brown actually did use these both in Kansas and during his assault on Harper's Ferry when he attempted to basically start a slave rebellion and overthrow the institution of slavery prior to the Civil War. That attempt, of course, failed, but him and many of his men would have been using these Sharps carbines purchased by the Emigrant Aid Company during their attack on Harper's Ferry. Because of John Brown's use of the Model 1853 slant breech, in addition to being known as Beecher's Bibles, they've also been famously known as John Brown's Sharps. So John Brown willingly, after he was captured, went to his death. He did not try to escape, even though there were some plans possibly in the works to get him free. There were pe certainly people calling for him to be released right away. And the Virginia militia and governor were very concerned that there might be an attempt to spring John Brown. But he went willingly to the gallows. And prior to being hung, he did not give a final speech. Instead, he handed over a note and it read, I'm quite certain the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged but with blood. I had flattered myself that without very much bloodshed, it might be done. John Brown was right. Within a short period of time, the country was torn in two and bloody conflict broke out, unlike anything seen in Kansas. Hundreds of thousands of Americans died during the American Civil War, which was started over the issue of the expansion of slavery and became a war that ultimately ended slavery within the United States at the cost of hundreds of thousands of lives, fulfilling John Brown's prophecy. This iconic Sharps Model 1853 Beecher's Bible is a artifact from all of that history we've just discussed. It is one of the few examples that can be directly documented to the Immigrant Aid Company. So it was part of Bleeding Kansas. It was part of that whole episode that predates the American Civil War. And then many of these carbines would have been used throughout that conflict, both in Kansas and across the United States, as the country fought to determine our future, to decide whether we'd be one nation or two, to decide whether it would be a house divided with free and slave, or one nation without slavery, as John Brown had hoped. This historic Beecher's Bible 
slant breech 1853 sharps is one of just hundreds of historic artifacts going to be available in our upcoming August Premier Firearms Auction.